Although only 13 episodes were originally made, Bagpuss is fondly remembered, marking the 50th anniversary of this saggy old cloth cat with another episode. It's Children's TV Night here on BBC4. Once upon a time, not so long ago, there was a little girl and her name was Emily. And she had a shop. There it is. It was rather an unusual shop because it didn't sell anything. You see, Everything in that shop window was a thing that somebody had once lost and Emily had found and brought home to Bagpuss. Emily's cat, Bagpuss. The most important, the most beautiful, the most magical, saggy old cloth cat in the whole wide world. Well now, one day Emily found a thing and she brought it back to the shop and put it down in front of Bagpuss, who was in the shop window, fast asleep as usual. But then Emily said some magic words. Bagpuss, dear Bagpuss, old fat furry catpuss, wake up and look at this thing that I bring. Wake up, be bright, be golden and light. Bagpuss, oh hear what I sing. Bagpuss was wide awake. And when Bagpuss wakes up, all his friends wake up too. The mice on the mouse organ woke up and stretched. <coughs> Madeleine, the rag doll. Gabriel, the toad. Oh, look, look. Oh, oh. And last of all, Professor Yaffle, who is a very distinguished old woodpecker. He climbed down off his bookend and went to see what it was that Emily had brought. <laughs> that is a very dirty, very old piece of rag. I don't know why Miss Emily brought it here. It is much too old and dirty for us to see what it is. If it is anything. is a very delicate piece of fabric. If you go bashing and scrubbing at it, you'll spoil it forever. You must treat it gently, lovingly and very politely. Ooh, we are very fond of you. We love you very much. That's better. Now, one mouse may very gently brush one part of the cloth with one soft brush. Brush, 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 brush. The mouse brushed very carefully and very slowly the pattern of the cloth began to show. Was it a pattern or was it a sort of picture? What was it? A wow! A wow! What happened? The mice saw something, something that frightened them. What was it? <laughs> that is a picture of an owl. That's all it is, a picture of an owl. And those foolish mice ran away from it. 
That is a very old picture of an owl. It has ancient Greek writing on it. Athe, which means Athens. That is the obol, the owl of Athens. There, yeah, you ignorant mice. If you remember that, you will really know something. The owls of Athens. Yes, they were kings among birds and famous for their beautiful singing. No, 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 no. Stuff and nonsense. Owls don't sing. They make a sort of hooting noise, you know, to which to woo or words to that effect. Maybe you're right. But I know a very ancient story about the owls of Athens. It may not be true, but it's very, very old. Well, tell it to us then. At night, in the groves of olive trees that grew on the mountainsides above the city of Athens in ancient Greece, the owls of Athens would gather together and sing lovely songs in the moonlight. Think of it, Bagpuss. It was a beautiful sight. Think of it, Bagpuss, please. So Bagpuss thought. And as usual, his thoughts appeared like magic. Oh, oh will that do? That's lovely. The owls of Athens sang so sweetly and beautifully that all the animals would come to listen. This pleased the owls enormously. They said to each other, Surely we are kings and queens and should be treated as kings and queens. So the owls told the animals that they would only sing to them if they brought presents. Not just good things to eat, but gold and silver and jewels. Well, the animals loved to hear the owls sing, and so, as they had no gold or silver of their own, they crept into the houses of people and stole gold and silver and jewels and took them to the owls. This pleased the owls very much indeed, and they said, Now we are truly the kings and queens of all. And they sang most sweetly together that night and the next night and the night after, and each night the pile of glittering treasure grew larger and larger until one night, one clear cloudless night, the moon, passing overhead, saw the pile of treasure glittering in her light. Then the moon spoke to the owls. She said, Oh, owls, where did you learn to sing so sweetly? The owls replied, Oh, moon, we did not need to learn. We were born able to sing so sweetly. Are we not kings and queens among birds? Then the moon said, Why do the animals bring you glittering treasure? The owls replied, Oh, moon, they bring us treasure because we told them that if they didn't, we would not sing to them. Are we not the cleverest of all birds? The moon did not answer. She sailed away through the sky on her journey. But as she went, she spoke one word of magic. At once, there came into the world a number of small, brown, ordinary-looking birds. At least, they looked ordinary, but the moon called them nightingales and perched them in the very tops of the trees. The next night, the owls sang together as usual, but no animals came to hear them. Nobody brought them treasure. They sang alone in the empty grove. An owl said, why has nobody come to hear us sing? Another owl said, Listen. All around them, in the tops of the trees, the nightingales were singing. As they listened, the owls knew that the singing of nightingales was far sweeter than the singing of owls, and they knew that nobody would ever come to hear them again or bring them gold and silver and jewels. The owls were angry. They were furious. Who could have played such a trick on them? Who? 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 They saw the moon smiling. You! You moon! They hooted. You moon! You a who? You! That's the sort of song for owls to sing, laughed the moon. And that shall be their song. And so, from that day to this, that has been the song of the owls. <laughs> yes, 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 quite right and proper. Those owls were proud and mean. I think it was a sad story, poor owls.
Look at this, everybody. You can see all the story in the pattern. I wonder what it is. I know what that is. That is a cushion cover. It was the cover of a cushion for a king. The cover of a cushion for a king? That's right. He must have been a very small king. He was very small and very bony and cold, too, in places. I know. The bony king of nowhere. That's right. Come on, mice. There's a roll of music somewhere. The bony king of nowhere, he sat upon his throne. He didn't much like sitting there because his throne was, his throne was made of stone. His throne was made of marble white, his feet were made of gold. It was a royal throne all right, but oh dear it was, it was extremely cold. That skinny king of nowhere was feeling very chilly. He said to go on sitting there was really very, and also very chilly. He jumped up on the tea table and said, please will you find a seat that's soft and suitable to warm a king's feet? Just see what you can find. They fetched him up a hammer, but they couldn't keep it still. They put him on a rocking horse, the rocking made him, it made him very ill. They sat him on the wool sack, but that rubbed up his knee. They rolled him on a feather bed, but that just made him, it simply made him sneeze. <laughs> Sad. He said, if you could help me, I'd be very, very particularly glad. Two mice came up from somewhere behind their royal chum. They said, dear king, here is a thing to warm the royal and stop you feeling numb. The thing, it was a cushion bright of silk and gold brocade, so square and soft and small and of silk and gold brocade. Now the happy king of nowhere is smiling on his throne. His smile is rosy, his sleeve is cosy, although his throne is stone, is stone. The mice have made it nice, so nice he is a happy king. And so they have, look. While they were singing, the mice had mended the cushion and stuffed it and edged it with gold braid until it was clean and bright and soft and certainly fit for a... certainly fit for a king. And Bagpuss placed the cushion neatly in the front of the window and left it there, so that if by chance a very thin king should happen to come past, he would see it there and come into the shop to collect it. And so their work was done. Bagpuss gave a big yawn and settled down to sleep. And of course, when Bagpuss goes to sleep, all his friends go to sleep too. The mice were ornaments on the mouse organ. Gabriel and Madeleine were just dolls. And Professor Yaffle was a carved wooden bookend in the shape of a woodpecker. Even Bagpuss himself, once he was asleep, was just an old, saggy cloth cat. Baggy and a bit loose at the seams, but Emily loved him. <laughs>